In February 2018, Katie and I joined a group led by Tom Stauff, CEO of the Columbus Zoo, to travel to Rwanda. We were to attend the groundbreaking ceremony of the new Ellen DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund, nestled at the edge of the Volcanoes National Park, and then to trek two days into and up the steep mountains to see the mountain gorillas. We arrived in Kigali via Atlanta and Amsterdam early evening on February 11th, where we were met by our guide Merari from Songo, Africa. After clearing immigration and collecting our luggage, we made our way to our hotel for the night. Day 1, February 12, 2019, Kigali to Bumsanze and Kinigi at the base of the Volcanoes National Park in the Virungu Mountains. We were up early this morning and after breakfast we loaded into our cruisers for the drive to Kinigi and the site of the groundbreaking ceremony for the Alan DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. I love the beauty of Africa and I found Rwanda to be one of the best organized, cleanest and most industrious countries I have visited in Africa, even as I marveled at the rustic simplicity that for me is Africa. Located in the rural area of Kinigi, the Ellen DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund is expected to boost mountain gorilla conservation efforts and promote Rwanda's tourism. Construction of the campus was spearheaded by the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund in partnership with the Ellen Fund. It will cost an estimated $10 million. The construction of the campus is expected to take two years and will create 1,500 new jobs and $2 million will be spent on local labor. In addition, an estimated $2.5 million will be spent on locally sourced materials. The campus will be a permanent home to the Diane Fossey Fund, which has been operating in Rwanda for more than 50 years through the Karisoki Center in Musanze. in Rwanda for more than 50 years now. Our work started in these mountains directly behind me when Diane Fossey established the Karasuki Research Center in 1967. Over the last five decades, we have grown our teams and programs dramatically and are proud to be the world's longest running and largest organization dedicated entirely to the conservation of gorilla. In a few months of starting to move the campus forward, we were approached by Portia de Rossi with the desire to honor her wife's birthday through a lasting gift to conservation. And now, just over one year after the Ellen Fund's lead gift for the campus was announced, we are here together celebrating the groundbreaking of the Ellen DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. To shape the entire design of this campus, to make it a highly collaborative space where we can engage and activate all of the stakeholders with whom we work. For students who are the future leaders of conservation, there will be classrooms, living labs, a library and computer lab, and dorms. For visiting scientists who help us conduct the critical science that underlies good conservation, there will be labs and offices and housing to stay in. We have celebrated many accomplishments, most importantly, the successful conservation of mountain gorillas. Today will stand as another incredible celebration that we have been able to have together. And I'm so happy that in the Ellen DeGeneres campus, we are creating something for Rwanda that is incredible, it's beautiful, significant, and a sign of our commitment to Rwanda and its people. Thank you again for joining us today in the celebration, and we look forward to hosting you on the campus in the near future. Learning about this passionate, committed biologist and the impact one person can have was the catalyst for Ellen becoming who she is today, a trailblazer just like her hero, Diane. So I am here 
because it was my dream to link my wife, Ellen, to her hero in a significant and lasting way. My dream aligned with a 15-year dream of the Fosse Fund leadership to build a permanent home in Rwanda. And so, the Ellen DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fosse Guerrilla Fund will be Karasoki's permanent home. I gave this gift to Ellen because we both loved and wanted to protect gorillas. After coming here, however, we fell in love with the country and its people. So this campus isn't for me or for Ellen. It's for the people of Rwanda. To become the next generation of conservation leaders, it is my hope that the campus will serve as a catalyst to encourage us to dream bigger, to know that we too can make an impact, and that all of us can become trailblazers just like Ellen and Diane. Them, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, they take a final photo and head back to their seats. Walking about a mile up the mountain road to the Mountain Gorilla View Lodge, I stopped to talk to these four young men. Hey, I'm Erisa. My name is Peter. My name is John. I live here. Being from South Africa and having traveled in many African countries, I was again struck by the friendliness of the African people, and Rwanda was no exception. We arrived at the Mountain Gorilla View Lodge and some of our group had an opportunity to take some photos with Portia, who we found very friendly and approachable. After a group photo, we piled back into our land cruisers for the 30 minute drive to the Amakora Songa Kenigi Lodge. We were welcomed by beautiful drumming and dancing as we checked into our rooms and changed for lunch and the afternoon's visit to the Bisate Learning Center. The Bisate Learning Center is attended by 2,600 children in both the primary and secondary schools, including the children of guerrilla trackers and members of anti-poaching teams. The Columbus Zoo and Partners in Conservation, or PIC, in partnership with the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International, support the Bisati Learning Center. PIC provides school supplies for every student, including textbooks and funds a conservation education program. We also build cisterns that enable students to have clean drinking water. Teachers report the student test scores have increased by 40% since children have had access to the educational materials. Partners in Conservation was founded in 1991 at the Columbus Zoo by gorilla keeper Charlene Gendry and docents Julie Hoffman Bolton, Barb Delorme and Jeff Ramsey. We were all so very proud and impressed to be associated with this extraordinary work in Rwanda. Some of our group brought a number of soccer balls to give to the kids at the Visati Learning Center. 
The undisguised exuberant joy as these children went wild for these soccer balls was very touching and inspiring. We left Bisate Learning Center to attend an award ceremony for trackers and staff of the Karisoki Dayan Fasi Gorilla Fund. I was proud to have been associated with the Golden Bazoo, as well as with partners in conservation, who have been a major funding source for these trackers, the Gorilla Doctors and the Diane Fancy Fund. We were impressed with the longevity of these dedicated men and women, and we were particularly pleased when Felix Ndagijimana was called to receive his 17-year certificate. Felix became the first Rwandan director of the Fasi Fund's Karasoki Research Center in January of 2012. He oversees all of Karasoki's research and protection programs in the Volcanoes National Park, as well as outreach programs and communities surrounding the park. He leads a staff of more than 100, including crackers, anti-poachers, research assistants, and administrative personnel. Felix joined Karisoki as a research assistant in 2004 and served as deputy director after earning a master's degree in primate conservation from Oxford Brookes University in the United Kingdom in 2008. We returned to the Mamakoro Songa Lodge, enjoying the beautiful grounds as the sun started sliding down the western sky, casting its lovely evening glow over everything. At sunset, we enjoyed some more entertainment, and some of our group actively participating as we admired this African sunset. This is always my favorite time in Africa, enjoying a sundowner cocktail normally followed by an excellent dinner. And tonight's dinner was no exception. This morning we boarded our land cruisers early for the drive to the Volcanoes National Park's Kinigi Gorilla Check-In Center. The view of the Virungu Mountains was spectacular from here. All five volcanoes in full view, Karisimbi, Bisoke, Sabinyo, Kahinga and Muhabura. I am Oliver. Oliver, nice yes. to meet you. Ano is in our local language, which means friendship. This group, they separate. What happen, they divide, they share the females. Mm, in the family, uh, there are many females. Uh, they can love some of the females, especially the others, can go with him. But in this family, no many females. 
That's why as long as they are there, for sure, some will leave them. After Oliver's very good briefing and Gorilla Habits lecture, we made the short drive to the trailhead. Our group was divided in two since only eight trekkers are allowed at each gorilla family group. Karen Morrison, Colleen Stolf, Tommy's taking this picture, Rick and Donna Porter, Kathy Little, Diane and Jim Belthaser were assigned to the Sabinho gorilla family. Katie and I were assigned to the second group, joining Patrick Ellis and Emily Waringa, Jaylene and Brad and Hayes, awesome. Bonnie and David Willenthal, <laughs> to the Umubanu Gorilla family. We started the trek up the mountain only to discover Katie's boot soles were completely delaminating. No problem, I had some athletic tape in my backpack and Brad did an excellent job doing an athletic taping job. My ankles are gonna have a lot of support. And we continued up the mountain. So this is our first rest stop. <laughs> oh, third, I see, okay. Can you see this stone wall? Yeah. It's the limit of the park. Uh, this is for keeping the buffaloes inside the park. Close? Yes. Oh. They use it to get outside the park. They measure the crops of the communities. The park mm. management have now they decide uh, to break this stone wall. It's uh, this stone wall from that side, the border of Rwanda to Uganda, the border of Rwanda to Congo. It's what? 74. 74 kilometers. Yes, all around the park. Tracking mountain gorillas is probably one of the most captivating activities in Africa. There are 10 habituated mountain gorilla groups in the park and 8 permits are allocated per group, making 80 permits per day available. Each and every group has something unique to offer, character, size, dominance and more. Some groups are led by silverbacks that are very peaceful and providing a peaceful family for them.
After almost three hours climbing up the steep mountainside, vegetation almost suffocating with bee sting thistles penetrating right through our clothing, we finally happened upon the Umubano family. the Amakoro Lodge, we stopped at the traditional Gorilla Guardians village. Most of the performers at this village are reformed poachers, now gainfully employed in tourist entertainment and performing their cultural history. We were saying Welcome here, welcome at the cultural village. We are very happy to see you. When he was looking, I can get Mama. 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 Jaylene and Brad participated in the wedding ceremony. Brad sent her back and demanded the dowry of cattle returned. He said that she was not a virgin.
We return to the Amakoro Lodge for the traditional African sundowner cocktails and dinner. But first we enjoyed a photo opportunity courtesy of Tom Stauff with the stunning Virungu Mountains and volcanoes in the background. day in this beautiful part of Rwanda. We made our way back to the Volcano National Park check-in center for our briefing of the day. Today our guide was Francois. Francois has quite a reputation and was totally entertaining while providing us with a very interesting educational opportunity. Well, a gorilla just fell in love with me yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So, and they told me they would, yeah. You gonna follow them? No, he just wanted right to be with Is he grabbing you? Huh? Did he they touch you? No, him. no, he didn't grab me. No, I, I wouldn't let that happen. I told him he couldn't do that. I see jiggy jiggy today. So it's the it's it, it, it Muhoza, huh? So I have uh, eight wife and three babies. Wow. First? Okay. So before to leave, she won't go to the toilet. Yes. Maybe number one, maybe number two. After meeting our porters for the day at the Gabatwa Trailhead, we started the trek up the gentle foothills of Mount Sabinho. You must watch out for the angry breath of the chameleon. When he blows in your eye, it'll make your eyes get infected. Later, you cover, you put in the fire to make it charcoal. You know charcoal. Mm -hmm. And the charcoal and the people who have the problem at the stomach and the problem at the number three, the area. <laughs> this is the area. You put in the water for the charcoal, you drink it, the area is stopped immediately. Yeah? And you see your cough and the room, you put in the water, hot, you take a blanket. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> After educating us about the uses of the eucalyptus tree, Francois treated us to the first of his many silverback behavior demonstrations. Francois worked with Diane Fassi for many years and actually can communicate with the gorillas. By the end of the day, we were wondering if Francois was imitating the gorillas or if they were imitating him. Come, 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 to oh, no. <laughs> no, touch, touch the touch today. Lick the tree. Sauce, you want to go to the toilet, you tell Francois, we have panga machete, make some more hope. After I show you, see you finish, you film in the cover, and very, very well. It's very, very important because inside the forest, no toilet. Number one is okay. Number two, this is the problem. Number three, say too bad. Number three, you will be back in hospital immediately. Is it the diarrhea? Huh? Also, it's diarrhea.
Mountain gorillas get most of their water from their plant material diet. Here's another gorilla behavior demonstrated by Francois. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, uh, 
Oh, yeah. We made it down the mountain, completely in awe of the amazing experience we have had. To commune with these amazing creatures bordered on a high spiritual experience. We are blessed to have had this opportunity and thank our guides, Oliver and Francois, and the wonderful porters who accompanied us every step of the way for a once in a lifetime experience. After our morning gorilla trek and a quick late lunch at the Amakoro Lodge, we took off for a couple of hour drive to Gisenye, right on the border of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This afternoon, we were to visit the Ubumwe Community Center. It was a beautiful drive through the land of a thousand hills. In 1991, Charlene Gentry, then a gorilla keeper at the Columbus Zoo met with zoo volunteers and with director Jack Hanna. They started the grassroots initiative that would benefit the mountain gorillas. Soon after, Partners in Conservation, or PIC, was born and in time became the catalyst for starting the Ubumwe Center and many other initiatives to promote education and employment opportunities so that people and animals can coexist peacefully. In 1999, a 15-year-old boy, Frederick Ndabaramiye, was dragged from a bus and brutally attacked by rebels who hacked off his hands with machetes and left him for dead. After a year in hospital, Frederick was placed at Mbabazi Orphanage, and there Frederick met Zachary Dusingizimana, a young teacher at the orphanage. It's especially for people with disabilities. Another thing I would like to tell you is that uh, all our operating expenses, 95 percent is from the, the global zoo and the partners in conservation. So we have uh, over 500 people with disabilities. And uh, on the other side, for the preschool and the primary school, now we have 840 children. So you can have a look. Uh,
Hello. So this is Justin. Justin, Justin. Justin is our principal for, for the school. So when we are not around, he is the guy who, who coordinates everything. So this is. This, this is, is the preschool, oh, yeah. preschool and the primary school. Okay, so for this one, they are the ones who spend the whole day here. But uh, a big number of them leave at lunchtime, they go back home. Thank you. Not willing to remain captive to hate and anger, Frederick and Zachary turn towards forgiveness and action. Feeling lucky to be alive, they wanted to help those like themselves and with the support of the Columbus Zoo's Partners in Conservation, Charlene Rendry, Jack Hanna, Frederick and Zachary founded the Ubumwe Community Center as a place where these people can get, be given an alternative, where they can be educated, learn skills and ultimately work generating a sustainable living for themselves and for their families. Today Frederick and Zachary speak internationally and are mentors to young people everywhere. They teach that the disability of spirit is far worse than one of the body. Frederick models his triumph over physical limitations through his paintings, his love of life, and his fearlessness. <laughs> Last night, on the way to Kigali from Kisane and the Urumwe Community Center, we had a small accident. One of the bicycles carrying likely 100 pounds of avocado swerved in front of a petroleum truck and we hit the truck at a reasonable speed from behind. Everyone is okay, but this morning, Jaylene was sat in the front seat with a very sore neck. Today, we visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial. It is the final resting place of more than 2,500 victims of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. The center documents the genocide, but it also describes the history of Rwanda that preceded the event. It is an important place of remembrance and learning and receives visitors from all around the world. The memorial has five primary objectives. 
One, to provide a dignified place of burial for victims of the genocide against the Tutsi. Two, to inform and educate visitors about the causes, implementation and consequences of the genocide and other genocides in history. Three, to teach visitors about what we can do to prevent future genocides. Four, to provide a documentation center to record evidence of the genocide, testimonies of genocide survivors, and details of genocide victims. And five, to provide support for survivors, and in particular for orphans and widows. Unlike the ex-concentration camps in Auschwitz and Birkenau, the Rwanda site include human remains and the tools and weapons used in their destruction. The children's room is dedicated to the memory of children killed in the genocide against the Tutsi. This section shows how a generation's dreams were stolen by genocide and remembers the thousands of children and infants slaughtered by the genocideers. The memorial gardens provide a place for quiet contemplation about the history of the genocide against the Tutsi. They allow visitors to reflect on how we all have the personal responsibility to prevent discrimination and mass so atrocity. Because Kachacha was uh, the courts were done within the villages where people come from, where the crime was committed, so then the names can be put. You're paying respect to a great people, great men and women who died innocently. So you later you read the history, you heard about the history, now you're experiencing the history. So one of you can take a step when you read the risk. While this visit to the Genocide Memorial in Kigali was an incredibly emotional experience for all of us, the true meaning of the memorial is best described in the following short video, Remembrance and Learning and hope for the future. Four years ago, more than a million Rwandans were killed during the genocide against the Tutsi. The Chigari Genocide Memorial has been and continues to be a place of remembrance and learning to honor the victims and ensure that it never happens again. I tried to watch like documentaries and uh, I was told about the story at school too, but it's never the same when you're in the, in the very country where these things have, have happened, right? This year, as Rwanda commemorated the genocide against the Tutsi during 100 days of mourning, the Kigali Genocide Memorial hosted more than 20 commemoration events. We welcomed more than 45,000 visitors who came from more than 100 countries to pay their respects to the victims of the genocide and learn about our history so that they can learn how to build peace and unity in their own communities. More than 100 parents and educators took part in our peace and values education workshops. Through our social and psychological support program, more than 30 survivors were supported to improve their lives and build hope for the future. Through an introduction of a digital guest book, for the last two years, more than 30,000 of our guests have registered to become friends of Kigali Genocide Memorial, and close to 25,000 of them shared their messages of remembrance and comfort to the survivors. Thank 
kandi tubakangurira n'ubyuko gweje bazaza yuko amateka y'u Rwanda atazongera kubukundi through their reflections and various peace building efforts in schools businesses and communities around the world it shows that we are truly creating a community of champions of humanity we are grateful to visitors partners and friends for their commitment to support our remembrance peace education and rebuilding lives programs Morocco's Our last meal in Rwanda was at Heaven, a wonderful restaurant owned by Elissa and Josh Ruxin. Elissa and Josh moved to Rwanda in 2006 with an NGO focused on helping Rwandans recover from the genocide by bringing agriculture and food science and healthcare to the country's villages. Elissa drew on her foodie expertise and together they opened Heaven, a gourmet restaurant overlooking Kigali and its famous hills. I highly recommend reading Josh's book, A Thousand Hills to Heaven, to learn how they are empowering Rwandans. Kigali. Rwanda. To me. To me. To me. This is where I'm from. Where I'm going. It's who I love. Food that eat. The lessons I learned. Where you are. When someone comes to your home, how do you want them? It's opportunity. Empowerment. Education. Showing. Progress. Hope. To me, it's home. This is Rwanda. This is heaven. And so ends a life-changing experience. A trip to beautiful Rwanda. <laughs>